Welcome back to the Jonas.net. My name is Donald Jonas. This is the second video of my two-part video tutorials doing backups in Zimbra Open Source Edition. In this video, we're going to actually restore from backup. We left off where you actually had created a backup, and that is done today on June 19th. This is the actual backup. Now let's go back into the webmail, and we're going to delete all our mail. So, obviously, so we can, we can restore it. And let's just highlight everything and delete it. And let's go into Sunt and delete. And trash and remove everything. Let's delete the calendar entries too. Delete. Delete. And the last one here. And I don't believe there are any other ones. Just check the view on this. I have it on work week instead of week. That way it's not included in the weekends. All right, so it's working well. Let's move this out of the way. So with the backup, let's close all these windows out. And let's go to the Zimbra installation, which is under the root, under the OPT. And let's go to our backup that we're going to be using, which is uh, in storage one, which where the attached hard drive is. It's a very simple process. We're just going to end up renaming the Zimbra installation. It's old, or you can just remove it and delete it. And we're going to rename the backup as Zimbra, and then run a command, a permissions command, to make it work. This has to be done when the service is stopped. Some people, what they do is they just right-click on here and they make a link. And then they name the link as Zimbra and drop it into the OPT folder. That way, when it runs, it's actually connecting to the additional internal hard drive. The beauty of that is if your hard drive, your Linux uh, operating system crashes, instead of copying everything over, all you have to do is just make a link and drop it in to this directory and run the permissions. I like to move everything back into its original position. That's just me. It really comes down to personal preference. This is kind of a neat solution where if you're doing your backups to an uh, external USB drive, for example, and you have a mocked up version of Zimbra running on your laptop, maybe in a uh, virtual box or something, or VMware, you could just take that USB drive and plug it into your laptop and drop a link into your OPT folder on your laptop, run a quick permissions command, and wh whatever date your user needed an email restored from, you could just attach that particular via the link uh, to your Zimbra installation on, say, your laptop, and fire up the Zimbra installation and find that email, go into the administrative console, open that user's email, find it, and then just send it to them. It, it's not the the fanciest way of doing backups, but it will work, and it's free. And I guess that's the whole point of these videos, is to use open source and free and find something that works. So with that being said, we're going to actually restore the Zimbra installation. So go into Terminal, and we're going to stop the service. Service, Zimbra, stop. This might take about 20 seconds to stop. And when that's done, uh, we're just going to copy it over. And then start it back up, fire up your Zimbra installation, and the email should be there, and we're finished. It's a very simple way of doing it, but it's solid. And that's what we're looking for here. It should just be a second more. And when this is done, I guess I can just rename this to old. Wait till it finishes here. I'm getting excited. I want to rename it. <laughs> That's funny. Rename it. Old. You know what? I feel so confident this is going to work. I'm just going to remove it. All right. And let's just take this and copy it over. Paste. 
and I'm going to just close out of this. And this will take a few minutes to copy, and then we'll start it back up. All right, great. It's finished copying over. Now we just need re to rename the uh, directory to Zimbra. Rename it to Zimbra. And we need to run a quick command. Go back to my website here and type in Zimbra once again. And the command is right here. Let's copy that. Open up your terminal. Let's paste it in. Oh, didn't quite paste. Let me copy that. Recopy that again. Sometimes it never catches. Well, I'm going from a virtual environment to um, a real environment. Sometimes it doesn't pass the information. There we go. Okay, um, so this permission right here is pointed to the default installation of Zimbra, which is right here. Now, if you're going to like do what I mentioned earlier and just use the link method where you just drop a link into the OPT folder, you're going to have to point the uh, permissions here to wherever it resides. So in my case, if I did that method, it would be storage one slash Zimbra backups slash Zimbra. But since it's in the default location, that's it. We are done. Pretty much just have to start the services back up. This would just take a moment. And I'm going to pause the video for a moment. I'll be right back as the services start up. All right, great. The services all started up normally. Let's close out of everything. And let's go to uh, the Zimbra installation here. Bring over the web browser. And it came right up. Let's log in. And the email should be back. There we go. Everything looks good. Let's just send off a quick email. We'll call it my test. Message sent. And we'll give it a moment here. There it is. Came right through. Go into calendar. There are calendar entries. And just do a quick calendar test. And if you remember from what I said on the other video that obviously those entries I made before the backup was made were not going to appear and they're not. So everything is working normally. We just sent an email, did a calendar entry. Everything that was made prior backup is now there and it's a very uh, simplistic way of doing your backups it works well Zimba is a great um, email collaboration server like I said in my other tutorial videos I use Zimbra to connect to my Thunderbird uh, email client I have no problem connecting to calendars or global address book great plugin of Thunderbird called Zindus that allows you to connect to the address books of uh, your environment, Zimbra environment. There are several Android apps out there to synchronize your calendars and address books and it works great on the uh, iPhone products. I use it on my iPod Touch, no problem. So thank you for watching my tutorial videos on how to do backups in Zimbra Open Source Edition. We ran through the very beginning and if you watched my first videos on actually how to install Zimbra and the first video on how to run and execute the script backup to a different hard drive and the end result was we restored the Zimbra installation. So thank you for visiting the Jonas.net and have a nice day. I just want to comment real quick here too. Thank you for all the positive feedback and emails I've received that my video tutorials have been helpful. 
Uh, it's always good to get positive feedback, and I'm, I'm very glad that they're helpful. And I hopefully I'll have some more uh, tutorial videos coming up here in the future. Uh, thanks once again for visiting thejonas.net, and have a nice day.